Hey, what's going on, everybody? You guys are checking out episode number 166 of the HoopDoctors.com podcast. Of course, I go by the name of Kevin Burke, and welcome back. So the season is like, what, three weeks old, and we're already um, faced with a legitimate question regarding the Warriors. Can they win 70 games? And I apologize in advance because I'm going to revisit this throughout the entire season because how can I not? So can they win 70 games? I hate to admit it, but yeah, yeah, I think they can. And a lot of people who, you know, don't want to acknowledge that, they're probably Jordan and Bulls fans from the 90s who don't ever want to see another team reach 70 wins, not because they don't think this team is good enough, but because you can't compete with anyone's childhood. And if your childhood memories are being a Bulls fan and a Jordan fan, you don't want any other team to reach a 70-win plateau, but I'm here to tell you the Warriors is not breaking news, but the Warriors are definitely primed to do something like that. I mean, they're undefeated as I speak right now, and they've had a lead in, if not every game, but just about every game, of like 15 points or more. It's ridiculous. Again, if you don't want to believe this, you're probably a Bulls fan and a Jordan fan, and you can't compete with your childhood memories. It's probably the same reason why you don't want to acknowledge that perhaps LeBron can do things on the court that Jordan couldn't, again, competing with your childhood memories. But I digress. And Steph looks mad this year. I mean, he's deadpan. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. But he just he just seems mad because a lot of people, including myself, think that Harden was last year's MVP. So Steph has come out guns blazing this year. I mean, if the season were to end right now, which of course it doesn't, but if the season were to trend the way it's trending right now, he's a unanimous MVP, Steph is. That thing going on in OKC is tricky. I'm talking about the Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook dynamic. And it was compounded, of course, last year when KD missed the majority of the season with a broken foot. Because here's what happened. KD was out for most of the season. And one of his teammates, his teammate, led the league in scoring and was an MVP candidate. That's two things that KD did on this same team a former MVP, and he's also a former scoring champ. So now he comes back in. He's healthy. Russell Westbrook is not necessarily going to go back to defer mode, not necessarily saying that he was always in defer mode, but any sort of inkling of him sharing the rock now is completely gone because he had a, ch- he had a taste of what it felt like to be the man Russell did last year. I think he liked it, all those triple doubles and 40-point games, and now KD's out again with the hamstring. So Russell's doing his thing again, more triple-doubles, more 40-point games. All this means to me is that free agency this year and next year can be very interesting, and Billy Donovan might find himself with the worst job in the league in about two years. I'm just saying. I want to personally take this time to apologize to my man, uh, Porzingis. As you know, I'm a Knicks fan. Listen, I was just as confused as anybody else on draft night when we took him. Not because I thought he was trash or that he, you know, that he couldn't play. That's because I didn't know if he was trash and I didn't know if he can play because we had no idea who this man was because New York is not necessarily the place where you draft a project. And that's what we thought he was, a project. But we're just a handful of games into the season. He's tip dunking on the back of everybody's neck and I am loving what I am seeing. So Porzingis, my man, I apologize. You do your thing. You cook. That's all I got, folks. It's podcast number 166 in the book. And I'll check you guys out next week. Be good.